Guys, very well played, Harry. Very positive end to an emotional and difficult few days. Yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> it's been a difficult, uh, difficult week to say the least. And uh, it was nice to, to get a win today. Ryan, in part at least, was that performance for your colleague, Jean-Pierre Reventroni? Yeah, 100%. We knew um, we had to perform today. And obviously we wanted to win um, because of him. And yeah, thankfully we did that today. Yours was the only goal of the game, Harry, and it looked like you were dedicating it to him at the end there when you lined up at half, at, at halfway line. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, it was a, a bit of a scrappy goal. Uh, obviously, Sandy just whipped one in with, with a load of pace. And um, yeah, when, when you're kind of feeling good, it kind of just comes off you and goes in, and, and that was the case. But uh, really proud of the boys today. You know, it's been a um, tough week, and to come here away from home, really difficult place to come. And um, didn't play as well as we know we can, but we dug deep when we needed to, and a great clean sheet from the boys, and uh, a really important win. Neat finish from you. You knew you were on side, didn't you? Yeah, I, I knew it was. You looked, you had a look. I knew it was close. Um, but yeah, obviously just managed to keep myself on side there and just kind of got a flick on it. So, um, yeah, really pleased with it. Ryan, this was always going to be a difficult fixture for you, a difficult place to come and get a result. And this was not only a, a performance of intensity and application, but mm -hmm. character too. Definitely. And um, like you say, it's a difficult place to come. They've been on good form all season. Um, you see their performance at Liverpool, they did very well there as well. So, um, yeah, to come here, to score one goal and keep a clean sheet, obviously we dug deep. So, yeah, it's a good, good result for us. You got through a lot of work, didn't you, in that second half? Yeah, we had to dig deep, defend uh, very well at times today. But um, again, that's the way we want to play sometimes, where you can't always have the ball, you have to dig deep and defend. And we did that well today. Harry, you came off very near the end. How are you? Yeah, it's, it's just a knock, I think. Um, pretty uh, Obviously, he's gone full power for the shot there, and I just managed to get in front of him. So um, I saw one. Um, but yeah, they're definitely worth it when you win the game, for sure. You know you're going to get asked that question quite a lot, don't you, these days? Yeah, no, no, I know. Um, but no, I'm feeling good, you know. Um, a lot of games coming thick and fast. Obviously, Champions League again on the, in, in the midweek. So we've just got to recover well, everyone. The whole squad's got to be ready to play. Um, yeah, and just keep battling out the games. Eight goals now. Golden Boot's going to be quite a battle this year, is it? Yeah, there's a long way to go, you know. Um, obviously, uh, there's some, some top players in the league and um, I'm feeling good. So it's nice to, to keep getting on the score sheet, especially important goals, you know, to, to help the team win. And um, yeah, the most important thing is the three points and, and that's what we came here for today and uh, really delighted we got it. Well done on the win, guys. Ryan, you're the player of the match, Harry, if you did the honours for us. All right, congrats, mate. Thank you. Well done, guys. Right. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Thanks, Thanks, fellas. You could just tell from their general demeanour in that post-match interview just how emotionally invested and almost perhaps drained they have been after playing 90 minutes of what after what went on with yeah. with the fitness coach. Yeah, it was, it was it's been a very difficult week. They've had an away game in Europe as well, and they've had to travel and all them things to prepare. But it's it's you know it's it's been a very emotional time. It takes energy out of you as a group of players as well. You know, he's, he, you know, you could see contact to begin the game. He was really affected in that minute's applause. Um, in a way, I saw him. He didn't want to clap. No. He was rubbing his hands. He was, but it was, it was affecting him in a big way. It must have been very close. Uh, and I think the staff probably would have felt it even more than the players. Yeah, Harry Kane, very close to being very emotional there, Darren. <coughs> And it just goes to show, I suppose, maybe these, this set of Spurs players deserve a bit more credit to, you know, putting, trying to put one thing aside to focus on the job in hand. Yeah, I mean, I think we even spoke about it at the start about maybe it galvanising them before the game, wanting to get the result for him. Um, and they, they certainly did that today. Maybe they weren't at their absolute best, but mm. they got the result. I thought, as I said, they handled their emotions, kept them in check, played with quite consistency in there, you'd have to say, were hard to play against. Um, and I think he'll be proud of the result that they've got. And the most important thing for Antonio Conte, as you saw at the end, when he's fist pumping the fans, he's still, he's still a winner at the end of the day. Mm. And obviously they've had a tough, tough week. And that was almost like that, the kind of icing on the cake, right, we've got the result, mm. we move on. And he was delighted at the end of the game. Mm. And it's three points in the, and that's what they're, they're after. Then how big a win is that, considering what happened in the North London derby? Yeah, I think it's been a good week for them after what happened. That's a massive game, massive blow if you lose it, they've lost it. As I say, went to Europe, got a, got a point there, a vital point there for the Champions League. And now they've come off the back and they've won the three points. Now, Did that lay the foundations in midweek, do you think? 
Yes, I do. I, I thought they played really well in midweek. They, they pressed a lot higher. They had more energy in trying to win the ball back higher up the pitch. And they played with some really good approach work. It was their final ball, their final shot at goal, which was a little bit similar early on in the game. But um, I, was, I was impressed with Tottenham the first 15, 20 minutes. I thought Brighton were going to come at them in big time after Liverpool first home game for De Zerbe. And in the end, Tottenham just took the ball away from them. And I think that was the best spell Tottenham had was in the first 20 minutes. They managed to score at the back end of it. And, you know, they saw the rest of the game out. It was up to Brighton for me to open Tottenham up. And they couldn't do it because that back five stayed intact. The midfield stayed intact. And as Darren's just said, they were very difficult to play through. Let's have a look then at the all-important goal uh, for Tottenham and for Harry Kane. Mm. How good a finish is this from him, Darren? Yeah, it's really good, but as I said, it, we come to expect that from Harry Kane. Really clever movement, keeps himself onside, just picks up a little bit of space, but uses the pace of the ball. Doesn't try and flick his head at it and really get enough power. The power's already on the cross. So all it's about him doing is, is directing it, really. And where the goalkeeper is, I mean, again, from there, Bryant's perspective, all ball watching, no one's checking what's going on behind them. And Harry Kane obviously knows that, keeps himself onside. But as I said, he doesn't really throw his head at it. He doesn't really try and turn it. He just tries to get enough on it and get hit the target. And he does it. He catches the keeper off guard, as you can see, because the keeper expected to come and claim it. Really good header. It's just the reaction. It's instincts. It's reaction. It's like a, a batsman, a, a bouncer coming at you, a real yeah. 90 mile an hour. You just have to play off instinct. Look, and there's the little point there, pointing upstairs, and we know we know exactly who that was for. That was yeah. for you. And uh, that was, it, was, it was a really clever goal in many ways because he had split seconds to react. He just gets a little glance. Strikers know where the goals are. The goals don't move. He knows where he is. His ge geography on the pitch was just, I just need a glance this. Mm. And it all happens that quick. Yeah. Yeah, it takes his tally to eight. Um, he's still some seven goals behind Erling Haaland, which, you know, eight is a good return <laughs> at this stage of the season. No, but eight is an outstanding return. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Unfortunately, I stand corrected. For, for, for Haaland, 15, I mean, that is just things we've not seen before, but mm. Harry, by his own standards, is having a, another phenomenal season. But it's just unfortunate that someone's come, obviously, to the Premier League in Erling Haaland and is putting up numbers at this stage of the season that we've never seen before. Yeah, and you made the point when we were talking during the break because, you know, his... His difficulty during the month of August has been yeah. well publicised. He's overcome that. Yeah. Uh, and even with that in mind, that should be still, you know, highly rated, that return. Oh, no, yeah. He's, he has started, you know, and as you say, other seasons he didn't start till September. Yeah. Now he's done that. And, you know, I still think Harry could end up with some, some great numbers, which he's on course for. But whether Haaland stops still, <laughs> I don't think so. That's the problem. Yeah. But um, no <coughs> doubt for Spurs fans, there'll be a huge sigh of relief when they heard Harry Kane talk about how yeah. it was only a knock. Um, because when he did go off, there was a bit of a limp in his stride. It's a vital little tackle that he's made there, you know. He, he's, he knew he was going to get kicked. And uh, when someone's going to shoot, you know, you know you're, you're, you're an offer here. He just gets his toe there first, and then looks like there's a little buckle in there and a twist. But he, he says he's all right, that he's jogging there. I think he'd have probably stayed on if, he, if he'd have been given the option, but... Conte said, no, you're coming off and we'll save you. <laughs> yeah, I think anything around the ankle area and Spurs yeah. have their hearts in their mouths. Yeah, right? yeah you've got to be, be careful with him because, as you said, he spent a lot of time out of the last couple of seasons mm -hmm. with that ankle injury, but putting his body on the line there because you never know. If he gets a shot off, it could be a goal, but he's put his yeah. ankle there, hopefully he'll be OK. Uh, but what about Tottenham's approach generally? You're encouraged by the fact that this was more front foot from Antonio Conte, something that we haven't quite seen before. Certainly from the start of the game, yes. I think uh, they're pressing a little bit higher um, rather than just dropping in. If, if they lose possession and, and, and your opponents, whoever they are, mm. are in the halfway line, then they'll drop deep and then they'll be very stubborn to get through and there's nothing wrong teams do that to be honest Brighton did that in the early stages which I was surprised I thought they were going to go pressing and go on the front foot but I think you know I think Conte's a shrewd manager he's an experienced manager I think he's un slowly un unleashing them right. he's just taking the handbrake off a little bit by little and I think you know playing the three in midfield uh, this week. I think he wanted to do that against Arsenal, but Basuma wasn't quite 100% fit. So I think there's a new couple of little systems he's working on to try and try and change that. So another great three points for Tottenham, but slight progression this week from, from Frankfurt game to today. Small steps. Small steps. Yeah. They had a couple of chances. Matt Doherty making his first start of the season had one of them. Just to make the the victory a little bit more comfortable. In fact, his decision-making here, what do you think before we get to that chance? 
Yeah, he's got to get it across the box. I mean, if he plays with his head up, then Sessegnon's got to tap him. But if from that angle, another angle, he never once looks across, he looks at the goal. Mm. And even this one, Glenn was talking about it, he should, he should meet it on the volley. He's got to try and work hard enough to get over the top of that ball and get it on the volley there. This is like a little flick that he knows what he's doing there. Again, it's the geography of the pitch. This is the one for me. This is where Spurs could have won. Look, he turns dunk really well and you're expecting him to hit the target. So, you know, it's very unusual he hasn't hit the target from there on his right foot. And they're the little things that I think Spurs need to go for the next level to get that two goals. Once they go two goals up, it seems like they play like a different team. Yeah. And in, in the past, the results have shown that. They need that second goal to just ease things and make them play with a bit more... I don't know, as I said, arrogance, but a bit more belief in themselves. Mm. Son had the ball in the back of the net, but it was given as offside. Mm. And you can't really argue against that. Mm. Clearly, that's down to you know, VAR and whatnot. But decent finish in the end. Well, it's the typical Son, isn't it? Left or right foot. This, that is his type of finish, where he gets it in and around the either left-hand side or the right-hand side of the box, shifts it onto... The, the left side there and just uses these instep and just whips into that far corner. We've seen him do that so often. I mean, for instance, his hat trick against Leicester, he's got two that were identical to that, coming in from that right hand side, steadying himself down and just using the defender, putting it in that far I corner. I think it just shows you, Vel I think it was Veltman, he was still on at the pitch there. He's the one that stepped up. Yeah. He was going to go yeah. back with Son and Son, he would have been on side. And at the last second, just as the ball's being played, he just steps up mm. and allows Son to just be offside, yeah. which is the difference. It's good defending. Uh, Doherty starting, did he give Conte anything to think about today or not? Could have done. He was so close to having what I would have said, you know, a really good game back in after his injury. Um, he's just got to go that next level. He does some good things, but then he's, he does some unusual things. And he's, he's trying to work his own game out at the moment. He was getting better and better, actually, getting the confidence before he had the injury. I think he's now got to start again. He's got an opportunity. You know, Emerson's out for a few games, two more, is it now? Yeah. So he's got an opportunity, you know, maybe won't play in the European game. But, you know, next week against Everton, he'll be back in there. OK. In the end, it wasn't to be then for Roberto De Zerbi in his first home league game in charge of Brighton. Let's get his thoughts now. Roberto, commiserations on the result today. What did you think of your team's performance? I think uh, <clears throat> we have played uh, a fantastic game and the result is not fair, 100%. Uh, but the football is um, is um, it's not uh, right sometimes, and um, today the result um, is not good for us, um, and so you created many chances in the game, particularly in the first half. Do you think you should have scored? Do you think you should have had a, a better result? But after the <clears throat> the fifteen the first fifteen minutes. But uh, I made a mistake in 15 minutes because Antonio, I, I thought uh, uh, he could play 3-4-2-1 uh, and uh, uh, 20 minutes be before the game uh, he changed the 3-5-2 the and uh, I made a mistake uh, the, 15, the first 15 minutes. After mm, these 15 minutes uh, uh, on the pitch, uh, it was only Brighton. What was your message to your players at half-time? Uh, for me, they, they were uh, fantastic today. Uh, I gave uh, them congratulations. And um, now the, our thing is only uh, of uh, Monday to to start again to work. And finally, Roberto, what do you feel you've learnt about your players, about your team today? No, nothing, because the football is the same uh, in the UK, in Italy. I lost uh, other game as uh, the game uh, uh, against Tottenham today. Uh, um, Football is um, not, uh, not fair. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Antonio, as a response to such a tough and emotional week, what did you think of that performance? It was a good performance, especially in a, 
in a difficult game and uh, it's not easy to um, Brighton is a really a really good team um, that position the table uh, show that uh, they are really really good team with the good players and it's not easy to to come here uh, and to play a good game I think uh, uh, we played with the personality we uh, we made a lot of pressure and um, also we tried to to play with the intensity I think at the end uh, the um, Mm, the victory, the, the win is uh, is deserved, but um, yeah, I think that Brighton, uh, a great compliment to Brighton because it's a really good team. You played with the extra man in midfield today, yeah. didn't you? How well do you feel that worked? Yeah, I think uh, we wanted to um, to play with one midfielder, one midfielder more. Um, because uh, I, I usually, usually we play with uh, two strikers, and uh, but at the same time, I said to you before the game. Uh, in this moment, we have uh, Deki Kulusevski injured, uh, and the same for Lucas Mora. We have only uh, Jill, uh, Ryan, uh, Ryan Jail, and uh, then when you have to play uh, every three days, uh, you need also to to give a bit of rest. Ricci played uh, every game in the last period. I think when you play every game, uh, and especially with a different pressure no? compared to uh, Everton, uh, he needed to have a bit of rest. And um, for this reason, I prefer to, to play with the two strikers at three midfield to give also the opportunity um, uh, Misuma uh, to play with. Uh, yeah, but um, I'm happy about his performance. I'm, I'm happy that Skip, Skippy uh, came back again with us. Uh, I'm happy for the performance, Doherty performance. Uh, after a long injury, it was the first, the, the, the real first game for, for, for him. Uh, yeah, a lot of, uh, of positive things. And uh, where we go away from here with... Uh, with good confidence, but we have to know that uh, on Wednesday uh, we have an important game at home. And um, yeah, I want to, to invite our fans to, to create uh, an amazing atmosphere uh, in our stadium because uh, we know that we are, we are going to play the qualification on Wednesday. Darren, what did you think of what he said there? Yeah, he made a lot of sense. Um, he's had to deal with a tough week as he, they allude to it with the first question. But the most important thing is that they leave him with three points. And for him being a defensive minded coach, clean sheet. Um, built on the performance in midweek, North London derby against Arsenal. Going to Brighton, which is a tough place to go. Bright, Brighton flying high. He'll be delighted with the result today. He would have loved that performance. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I think he'd sit on that coach after. He's got to say what he's got to say to the media. But I think with his staff, he'll go. That's exactly what we're learning. They're learning. They're learning. They're playing my. <coughs> excuse me. They're playing my way. Do you think he's learning more from his players in those kind of performances? Yeah, I think he's learning a lot about them, uh, their character, and how they, you know all the things that he's putting into the team. He's happy. He'll get on there and he'll be delighted with that performance. You know, whether he, whether he's, he don't care whether he deserved to win or not.